Hey! Welcome to my channel! Today we have a brief retelling of an exciting 2017 biographical crime drama film called Papillion. Be careful, spoiler alert! The life of a young Frenchman, Henri Cherrier, nicknamed Papillion, is saturated with a crime. He skillfully cracks safes, bringing the loot he found to the strict boss. He does not wince when he sees how accomplices beat and kill people who have been guilty of the honor, and he doesn't care about moral issues. All of that Papillion wants from life is to party nonchalantly with a dancer girlfriend, have fun spending the money obtained by theft, and plan how one day he will steal so much to buy a house in the country and live happily together. To please his girlfriend, the reckless and impulsive Henri hides a batch of large diamonds from the boss, which should be the first investment in a dream. However, Papillion has never stained his hands with blood, he is a thief, not a murderer. Therefore, the visit of two policemen comes as a surprise to him, who put the guy in handcuffs and charged him with the murder of a pimp. Papillion understands that the boss, who discovered the deception, decided to punish the thief. The wheel of justice has begun to spin, and now the statement of innocence and the alibi that the beloved is ready to give to the guy does not matter. And so, yesterday's playboy in a grey prison robe descends into the hold of a ship to sail to South America with other prisoners to serve a life sentence in one of the worst prisons in French Guiana. Despite the horror of his situation, Cherrier does not lose any hope. The same party of convicts floats the millionaire Louis de Gas, who was caught in securities fraud. With his money and Henry's resourcefulness, a lot is possible. Papillion offers his fellow traveler a deal, he becomes Louis's bodyguard and provides his partner with the amount necessary to escape. After some hesitation, the man agrees. He does not intend to run away because he believes that by Christmas he will be released thanks to his wife's money and lawyers. The prisoners arrive at the exile camp, which is guarded not so much by guards as by a wild thicket and a sea infested with sharks. It is believed that it is impossible to escape from here, but Henri does not lose heart. He quickly takes matters into his own hands and finds a jailer willing to give both of them light jobs at the hospital for $1,000. Alas, the morning prepares an unpleasant surprise for the prisoners, it turns out that the camp's deputy commandant, whose family suffered because of Lewis's fraud with counterfeit bonds, has his sights. So instead of the infirmary, both men go to the zero kilometer a complex kind of strenuous labor. Prisoners manually drag heavy boulders and push carts laden with stones. They daily risk dying from explosions and unreasonable efforts, and the malnutrition of convicts is so significant that a piece of bread is torn from the hands of a corpse does not cause disgust. Surviving by all available means, Louis and Henri involuntarily imbue each other with respect. Papillion admires his partner for his stamina and survival ability, and the millionaire is not as weak as it seems. Exhausted by overwork, he finds time to draw on a notebook bought from the overseer, dreaming of a soon meeting with his beloved wife. The men's business partnership begins to develop into a semblance of friendship, and Lewis's former distrust of his partner dissipates when Papillion returns his lost money to him. However, circumstances do not prevent the former thief from appropriating them. While working, Henri meets the sailor Sellier, who proposes a joint escape. Papillion doesn't mind taking risks, but he soon manages to find a moment to exchange secret words with the man who supplies the jolly damsels to the camp command, and Henri does not miss the chance. He promises the pimp a large sum for the opportunity to use his boat, and he, after bargaining, agrees to arrange an escape. It would seem that fate is on the side of the lucky Papillion. But no, fortune isn't rushing to pamper Henri with gifts. After returning to the camp, friends are attacked by two convicts who decided to take their hands on the money, and although they manage to fight back, the incident makes Lewis understand that he will not live to see the appeal. Now the man has no choice but to go on the run with a comrade in misfortune. The new day is coming, and Papillion's plans are collapsing again. An unfortunate fugitive, guilty for the death of a guard, is returned from the jungle, and there is only one sentence for such a thing, a guillotine without trial or investigation. The painful execution procedure has a depressing effect on the psyche of Lewis, shattered by recent events. When he and Henri have the duty to bury the decapitated body, the nerves of the former fraudster cannot stand it. He drops the corpse and refuses to touch the terrible burden. Lewis cannot even deal with the overseer's whip, although he willingly uses a harsh means of persuasion. The whip whistles, and the bloody Lewis writhing on the ground. Wanting to save his friend, Henri hits the jailer on the head with a stone picked up from the ground. And then, realizing that he signed his death warrant, he goes on the run without preparation and money, leaving the exhausted Lewis at the camp. Maybe the boatman will agree to lend money to Henri? 
he is not poor, in Paris, the former burglar has some money hidden he just needs to get there, and the guy will give everything to the last centime, just to be saved from the hell prepared for him. But fate had other plans for Papillion. There is no reason for the boatman to help the fugitive since the head of the camp will pay him twice as much for the captured convict. Captured Omri is returned to the camp. The wounded guard survived, and the guillotine does not threaten Papillion, but the commandant comes up with a punishment almost more severe than death. The guy will have to spend two years in solitary confinement without the right to walk and communicate, in fact, in complete silence, a fate that can break the hope of any person. But not Henri. He does not give up, even when the recovered guard comes to the cell to beat him for the fatal blow with a stone. And the guard has to retreat because the prisoner stubbornly does not want to break. He can be murdered but not forced to submit. Lewis hasn't forgotten about his comrade. A few days later, Henri begins to find halves of coconut in a daily bucket of clean water, a mere trifle in the wild and a real treasure in solitary confinement. Humble greetings from a friend give him the strength to fight despair until a sudden check reveals a prisoner's little secret. The commandant is trying to figure out who is sending the coconuts, but even a cut-down ration and being kept in complete darkness do not force Henri to give up his comrade. Put him in darkness for the remainder of his sentence. For the remainder of his life. All the jailer's tricks are broken against Papillion's firm will. An unbearably long two years pass and Henri can return to the general camp. During his absence, Louis has not died. He managed to gain the confidence of the commandant and is now listed as his assistant, enjoying the relative freedom of movement around the camp. At the first opportunity, Louis comes to a friend, asks for forgiveness for the clumsy help that turned into misfortune for a comrade, and reports that circumstances favor the escape. Soon the warden would be hosting a film screening for the local bigwigs in the prison courtyard, the perimeter security would be loosened, and Louis would have access to the right keys. Cellier, who has not lost hope of getting free, joins Louis and Henri is planning to escape, and then the young man Mathurette, who is subjected to constant harassment by the overseer for his good looks. At first, it seems that the fugitive's luck is running. A sudden downpour puts an end to the screening of the film, Louis's jump from the wall turns into a broken leg, and at the boat, the fugitives are met with guns pointed in the face and clicking bolts. However, the boatman takes the money, and four travelers rush into the ocean towards freedom. Although, this freedom needs to be scratched out from an unpredictable element. And to do this is not easy, rocking on the waves in a fragile boat, which is ready at any moment to fall apart or roll over under the blows of a storm. Cellier is sure that he cannot risk dragging a dead weight in the form of Lewis. A broken leg makes him a useless assistant, the money is long gone, why let a man take a seat in the boat? A fight breaks out, Majorette, who had not previously dared to object to Cellier, comes to the aid of Henri, who comes to the defense of his friend, but it is not they who deal with the sailor, but Lewis. Maddened by what is happening, he picks up a dropped knife from the bottom of the boat and strikes Cellier with many blows. Five fatal minutes, and the corpse floats on the waves, and the survivors continue to struggle with the stormy ocean. The arrival in Colombia appears to Papillion as a sweet dream. Tropical coast, warm water, endless sky, friendly natives who sheltered travelers in cozy huts, and venerable nuns who were ready to help anyone who suffered. Absolute heaven on earth. Here it is, the long-awaited freedom, but the misadventures of friends did not end. The nuns respect the letter of the law, they did not think of sheltering fugitive convicts. Papillion is the first to see the police car speeding towards the village. He has a chance to hide in the surrounding jungle, but he will have to leave Louis, who is now sleeping in a hut, and the naive Maturette, who believes that he has found a new home in this fabulous corner. Henri does not hesitate. He rushes to the rescue of his comrades and manages to see how Maturette is killed by a bullet before the police knock down Papillion himself and Louis. Five years pass. Henri spent them in solitary confinement, having no idea about Louis's fate. Papillion turned gray, withered, and lost its former vivacity, but did not go crazy and did not break, like most prisoners in solitary confinement. The commandant, who has not forgotten the obstinate prisoner, asks Henri what gave him the strength to live, but the man does not answer. He is transported to prison on Devil's Island, where there is no point in keeping an eye on the prisoners, they are guarded by sheer walls of a rocky cliff and countless miles of water around. Here Henri is waiting for Louis, exiled by the commandant to the island five years ago for insubordination. He seems to have lost all hope, and this impression is further strengthened when Lewis reveals that his ex-wife married a lawyer, which means that a new appeal should be forgotten. Lewis advises his friend to leave thoughts of escaping, but among the drawings covering the closet walls, Papillion sees a boat and realizes that deep down in the man's soul, 
there is a craving for freedom. Encouraged friends begin to prepare a new escape. And let the idea of sailing to the mainland on homemade rafts from empty bottles, bags and coconuts look like pure suicide, both are ready to risk everything to win. At the last moment, Lewis, assessing his options, announces that he will not leave the island. Okay. I need to stay. Henri must run, he will have enough readiness and strength. Papillion is not able to help Louis, his place is now on Devil's Island. Friends shake hands for the last time, and the Papillion makes a crazy jump flight into the water from many meters high. Hearing the enthusiastic cry of a friend who has surfaced downstairs, Louis smiles happily. He does not doubt that Henri will achieve the desired freedom. Decades later, Henri Cherrier returned to France. From now on, Venezuela has become his home, but Papillion wants to publish his memoirs in his homeland and share with his compatriots what he had experienced. In the final credits, viewers are informed that Henri Cherrier's book has become a bestseller, has sold millions of copies and has been translated into many languages around the world. The author has been granted a pardon and the right to live freely in France. Did you enjoy watching it? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.